In our last session, we learned about the vital role that obedience plays in our becoming more like Jesus. Now we move on to suffering. But how can suffering make us more like Jesus? Didn't Jesus promise to give us rest? Isn't the way of Jesus easy? Matthew 11.30 states that Jesus said, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. To follow Him means we have to be willing to surrender everything, even if this means suffering, so that we might be more like Jesus. Well, hello everyone and welcome to uh, lesson three in our series that we're calling Like uh, Jesus. Um, remember, uh, this is God's plan for our lives. Uh, God has planned for each and every one of us to be conformed into the image of His Son, to be like Jesus. What an incredible, what an incredible plan that is. But as we've gone through our lessons, we've learned a couple of things about this, that uh, God wants our participation in this now, and that requires on our part, uh, surrender. Well, we've got to surrender to Christ. To follow Christ simply means we've got to surrender everything to Him. But we also learned that you won't surrender to Him if you don't trust Him. And you've got to trust Christ. We've got to, we've got to see Him as, as that treasure in the field, that pearl of great price that the Scripture talks about, so that we would be more than willing to, to just sell everything, if you will, give up everything in order to follow Christ. That's what the Scripture is teaching. And so I encourage you a couple of weeks ago to pray uh, earnestly, if you will, diligently pray that God would reveal to you the beauty and the goodness of Christ so that our following Him would be out of this incredible love, this incredible joy of being able to pursue the life that, he's, that He uh, offers. Um, last time we were together, we introduced the subject of obedience and we said that being like Jesus requires obedience on our part because Jesus Himself was uh, obedient. And so uh, tonight I want to introduce uh, a different uh, subject. Um, and that is, and, and obedience was kind of difficult. Uh, that, that, okay, that, that idea of doing what God tells us to do, obedience. Well, uh, tonight I want to talk to you about uh, suffering. I want to talk to you about this, uh, the, to the topic of suffering, that being like Christ requires that we be like Him in the area of suffering. Let me read uh, a little bit of a story found in Mark chapter 8, beginning in verse 31. We're going to read a few verses together uh, as we get into this, but look at these verses. Then Jesus began to tell them, the disciples, that the Son of Man Himself must suffer many terrible things and be rejected by the elders, the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed, but three days later, he would rise from the dead. As he talked about this openly with his disciples, Peter took him aside. Can you imagine this? Peter took Jesus aside from the rest of them, said, Jesus, come here, I got to talk to you. And he began to reprimand him for saying such things. How many of you know Peter thought he was doing the right thing? Peter thought he was doing the right thing. This idea of you suffering, that's not what this is about. This is about a kingdom that's coming. You're going to be the king. We're going to be your followers. Nobody's going to have to suffer. Because who wants to suffer? Seriously. This isn't a pleasant topic. Jesus turned around and looked at his disciples. Then reprimanded Peter. Get away from me. Remember this? Satan, you're seeing things merely from a human point of view, not God's. 
Was suffering a part of God's plan? Could it be? Is it possible that even for our life, we reject suffering? And, and oftentimes, how many times do we rush into somebody's life and we try to get them out of situations they're in? When possibly that very suffering might actually <laughs> be doing good. God might have allowed that in their life for good because we see things from just a human point of view. It's hard for us to see any benefit in suffering at all. Verse 34, then calling the crowd to join his disciples. So he gets this whole crowd together. Jesus said, I got to talk to everybody. Okay, so he gets everybody together and he says this, if any of you wants to be my follower, so I got a question for you. If Jesus were speaking this to us today, uh, today, he would say this, do you want to be my follower? That's his question. So what would your answer be? I mean, seriously, if Jesus said, do you want to be my follower? What would your answer be? Your answer might be, well, what's required? What's in it? What are you wanting from me, right? The truth is, though, if you saw him as the treasure in the field, you'd be going, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But Jesus is saying, because he knows who we are, he knows this progress we have to go through. He knows this growth that we have to go through. So he says, anyone who wants to be my follower, you must, not optional, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross, and follow me. How many of you know those are not words you hear a lot about today? Take up your cross, follow me. Then he said this in verse 35, if you try to hang on to your life, you're going to lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, for the sake of the good news, for the kingdom, you will indeed save it. Let's just look at this real quick. Let's make some observations about this uh, subject of suffering. It's an important subject. It's important if we're going to be a follower of Christ that we understand this. Number one, Jesus had to suffer and be rejected. I want you to see how both of those go together. That Jesus had to suffer and uh, be rejected. If we've been in church any time at all, we know that when Jesus suffered, He bore our sins, right? I mean, He bore our sins. We understand that. There was suffering that took place there. But how many of you know this? That at the moment, at the time that Jesus died, He did not die a hero's type of a death. Do you understand what I'm saying? How many of you know that there are some people who die for others and it's heroic, right? We have soldiers that lay down their lives, uh, first responders as they're now referred to, that, that give their lives. And, and when that happens, we applaud them and we salute them and we honor them because they died heroically. But when Jesus, at the time Jesus died, it was not a hero's type death. He not only suffered, he was rejected. The Bible said this, Jesus said, I've got to suffer many terrible things and be rejected. That's different. That's different than just dying. He died and was rejected. Nobody stood around outside of his mother, but she didn't understand what was going on. Nobody was sitting there applauding going, Jesus is dying for us. No. He was completely rejected. By the way, do you remember where his closest followers, most of them outside of John, who was there with Jesus' mother, do you remember what happened to them? They ran. Everybody ran. He died rejected. That's a completely different level, isn't it? So, so Jesus, not only did he have to suffer, but Jesus said, I have to be rejected. Um, number two. This is a tough statement. The way to become like Jesus is through suffering and rejection. How many of you are still in? How many of you still want to be a follower? If being a follower actually requires on our part, if need be, suffering and rejection. Um, most of you have probably heard the phrase, take up your cross. Jesus mentioned it often, didn't he? Take up your cross. What does that mean? I mean, we've heard all kinds of explanations. I think there are two key ideas when Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. 
When someone took up their cross in this day, it meant they were dying. When you picked up a cross and you started that road to that place, there was no turning back. Do you understand what I'm saying? You didn't pick up a cross and go, you know what, I'm out. I'd like to get something else. No, no, no. It was not, you were on your way. There was no turning back. When you picked up a cross, no turning back. You know where you're going. When Jesus began to carry that cross down Golgotha's road toward the hill of, uh, of uh, Calvary, uh, toward Golgotha, um, there was no turning back. It wasn't like Jesus was going to say, you know what, I'd like to stop. No, he was on his way to death. Do we understand that? But I think there's another point to taking up their cross that's really important for us to think about tonight. When Jesus bore the cross, how many of you understand that He died for our sins? He was forgiving us. Now listen to this. Even though most didn't even notice what He was doing. Did you catch that? He was offering forgiveness, although most people didn't even know what He was doing. How many of you remember from the cross He said the words what? Father, Forgive them. So here's Jesus on the cross offering forgiveness to the world. And how many of you know that today there are many people who pay no attention to it? None whatsoever. Don't even care. So, number three in your notes. Forgiving others is the Christ-like suffering we're called to bear. When Jesus says to you, take up your cross, one of the things he's saying to you is this. If you're going to be my follower, you're going to have to be willing to offer forgiveness to others who hurt you, insult you, revile you, mistreat you. You're going to be, you need to offer forgiveness to them even though nobody may notice. Nobody may notice what you're doing. Nobody's going to come up behind you and pat you on the back and say, you know what, yeah, that was so kind of you to do that. Nobody may even pay attention. The person that you forgive for doing that to you may never come up and go, that was really nice of you. Now, how many of you know that is very, very hard to do? Bearing, listen to this, bearing the sins of others leads to suffering and rejection, doesn't it? But isn't that exactly what Jesus did for us? He bore the sins of others. It led to suffering and rejection. And then he says to us, if you want to be my follower, take up your cross. That's tough stuff, isn't it? That's not really easy to do. Now, number four in your notes real quick. God picks our cross for us. We don't pick our own cross. He picks it for us. Uh, we don't get to choose. God... There, there are just situ situations that you find yourself in in the middle of the, the day. You didn't even plan on it happening. You just find yourself in a situation where you have a choice. Are you going to pick up a cross and forgive somebody who's mistreating you? Are you going to take up that cross or not? Are you going to walk away from it? Uh, come on. How many times have we walked away from that situation? And God wanted to use that situation and that circumstance to prepare us for kingdom living. Number five in your notes real quick. When we endure suffering, we are pulled deeper into the heart of God. I believe that. I really do. When, when you and I are able to endure the hardship, the trials, the suffering, the rejection the mistreatment, the misunderstandings, those kind of things, when we're able to just do that, to endure it, we're, we're just drawn into the very heart of God. That's His heart. That's what He's called us to do. Here's a question. Is it possible that many followers of Christ do not experience that intimacy with God because they refuse to take up the cross in this area. 
and they're really not experiencing that deeper intimacy with God because they say, you know what, I'm just not going to take that. I know, and down deep, maybe in the back of your mind, you know what Christ would have you do, but you're like, I just can't. I'm not going to do it. And then there seems to be a distance between us and the Father. When we're able to embrace that suffering and rejection that comes into our life, it leads us into deeper intimacy with God. And here's something to remember. A sixth observation real quick. Our suffering is not permanent. Everybody listen. Please listen. Our suffering is not permanent. Do you remember when Jesus was in the garden and he prayed, God, let this cup pass from me. Let this cup pass from me. Remember him doing that? He did it. By the way, I just want you to know something. The cup did pass from him after the suffering. He went through the suffering, but it didn't continue. It ended. There is a day. Listen to this. Everyone, please listen to me. This is not religious fluff. This is not just some crutch we can throw out to people to help them just somehow make it through the day. This is what God's Word says. One day, God will wipe every tear from our eyes. He's going to do it. Because He's going to eliminate all suffering. All of it. So when, when we talk about enduring the suffering now, so that we can experience what Paul called the resurrected life, just understand something. It's not permanent. Here's what, here's what the scripture says in Hebrews uh, chapter 12. Again, we looked at this verse. Uh, I, I think last lesson we looked at this verse. But here's what Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 says. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. Remember that? Keeping focused. The champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Why? Look at this next statement. Because of the what? It's the joy awaiting him. He endured the cross. Because suffering is not permanent. He disregarded its shame. Now he's seated in a place of honor beside God's throne. How many of you know that there's a day when we're all going to be seated in a place of honor as followers of Christ? Number seven in your notes real quick because we're running out of time. Write this down. God has our best interests at heart. This is a matter of trust again. This is a matter of faith. This is a matter of saying, okay, if God wants me to go through suffering, if He wants me to do that, there is some good, there is some part of this that is beneficial for me. Absolutely. I just want everybody to understand something. You are not going to be forced to follow Him. You're not. Because according to Scripture, he says this. Jesus says, if you want to follow me, come on. If, if you want to follow me. If you want to be a part of this. I'm not going to throw a rope around you and drag you into this. If you really want to be a follower, then come on. But it's like, you know what? You can follow or not. Referring back to my childhood again, I remember singing this song. It wasn't referred to as a hymn. It was a song, and, and in, <laughs> in its time it was new, and it was fresh. But we would sing this at uh, camps and as a, a kid in church. I've decided to follow Jesus. Does anybody remember those? I've decided to follow Jesus. And it was this, no turning back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me cross before me, world behind me. Boy, that's my recommendation today. Somewhere along the line, we have to make a decision. I decided to follow Jesus. And if that's the case, I'm just telling you, there will be suffering. That cross that we're called to bear will be a cross of forgiveness. Just like Jesus forgave us, it is a cross that He's asking us to bear to forgive the sins of others. And when you do that, without recognition, without going around going, look what I did, look what I did. No, Jesus bore our sins and was completely rejected as He was doing it. You might be as well. That's what God's called us to do. So my question to you is this. Have you decided to follow Jesus no matter what? God bless you. God of all glory, Savior of Holy One, eternal.
Let your praise fill.